Don Kinney here for Cycle World at Laguna Seca Raceway in Monterey, California, where I've just spent the day riding the new 2021 Aprilia RSV4 factory. And I also got one session on what they now call just the RSV4. That's the standard version of this bike. There's been some pretty significant updates for 2021. We're looking at new styling, of course. You could just see from the get-go that They've incorporated their uh, MotoGP derived uh, aerodynamics have, have made its way into this production road model. And so the biggest cue would be the front winglets that are integrated into the bodywork up front, create some downforce. And it's part of an overall aerodynamic uh, treatment that's improved the airflow around the bike. It creates a better bubble for the rider, which equates to less uh, disturbance and turbulence at speed. So you can uh, really get tucked in nice on this uh, revised styled uh, RSV4. The riding position has been modified where the seat is about nine millimeters lower on the saddle and 10 millimeters lower on the footrest. Both of that though, without compromising uh, cornering clearance, they've actually claimed an improvement in uh, bank angle. Revise the fuel tank shape and you can get your elbows tucked in a little tighter now as part of making the, the riding position a little more compact and more uh, sport oriented. So today around Laguna Seca and the faster parts of the track, uh, yeah, it felt pretty good. I didn't, uh, I don't have a sore neck at the end of the day. So that's uh, something for the aero package. New uh, powertrain, uh, the updates there, basically they've increased the stroke one millimeter and that's given a, a, a 20 cc in, increase in displacement. Now it's at 1099 cc, up 20 cc's from its uh, predecessor. And that in itself, you would think, oh boy, you know, we're talking more peak performance now, monster torque. Well, there is an improvement in torque, but the uh, peak horsepower remains at a claim 217. And the reason for that is uh, Euro 5 emissions. They've kind of tightened the reins on the manufacturers with the the emission standards for Euro 5, so that increase in displacement is offset by more restrictive exhaust, and the end result is same peak power, but a little more torque. They claim 5% at about 6,000 RPM, and throughout the rev range, there's just a little bit more torque throughout. So out there in the real world on the track, I did quite a few roll-ons, you know, tall, taller gear coming onto the front straightaway after I got done doing all my hot laps. I was just kind of experiencing the power delivery on this bike from low revs all the way to the top. Uh, let's say second gear where you can really feel if it's got any like dips or, or peaks in the delivery curve. And I have to say very linear, you know, from 3000 RPM all the way to the red line, which is about 14 grand on this engine. Just pulled strong, very linear all the way up. And that's where the, uh, the electronics have been updated. ECU is four times faster than its predecessor. Say it's got like four times the amount of, uh, you know, memory storage. So that's allowed them to have more advanced algorithms for their ride control package. Uh, Aprilia calls it APRC, and they've spent some attention uh, just refining that, bringing it up to, uh, to current standards. New features there, engine braking control, which is lean sensing using the six axis Bosch IMU. Cornering ABS fully implemented on this model with the electronic updates. All those things allowed me to give it stick coming off of the tightest corners. In first gear, you could feel the wheelie control and traction control really doing its work. Keeping the front low, it would come up. I could feel the front start to fold and it would set it right back down. Wouldn't upset the bike too much. After riding this $26,000 factory for most of the day and then spending one session on the $19,000 uh, RSV4 standard model, which has cast wheels instead of forged wheels like the factory. It has sack suspension, fork and shock and steering damper, which are all, uh, the suspension is, is old school, not electronic adjustments. You have to get out your screwdriver tools if you want to make some adjustments. Where the factory model has Olin's active suspension, which controls the damping compression rebound on the fly. It gives you various modes for active adjustment while you're riding, whether it's street setting, a track setting with uh, 
DOT type tires or track setting on slicks. And also it gives you three manual modes where you can go into the menu and make, make damping adjustments in the menu, but they'll stay static as you ride, just like uh, old school non-electronic suspension would. It's just convenient that you can go into this new five inch TFT dash that uh, has a very intuitive menu. I came into it cold this morning and didn't take too long just playing with the buttons. They have new controls on the handlebars. They got rid of the little toggle switch of the past, which could be kind of clumsy with the gloved hand. And now they have a, a really well laid out button system to navigate the menus and to make those uh, changes to parameters, whether it's suspension, uh, ride modes. Uh, Prelia's done a really good job here. We had a, a good time. This is a typical uh, overcast day at Laguna Seca. I spent a good part of the sessions just trying to keep my face shield from fogging up too much. Back in the day, being on a bike with 200 plus horsepower in these conditions uh, would have really been harrowing. Today, had my attention, but the bike made my work that much easier and I think it would do the same for you whether you're a canyon rider or a track day guy or, or you're looking at getting one of these to set it up and go club racing. Uh, Aprilia's really done a good job on on updating the RSV4 and keeping it at a good price, good competitive price point. And it'll be interesting to see how the bike fares against its competition when we gather all the top bikes together and do a straight up shootout.